Oh. My. God. We've done it 22 times. We're going to do it one more again. Championship race. Homestead. Nathan Young Designs. B Car Series. Three Wide Racing League. OCR. R. 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 T. V. 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 Bringing you flag to flag coverage. Matt Kingston. Thomas Morris. Trey Landry. The dynamic trio. Bringing it to you. Hot and heavy. Gentlemen. Are you ready? Oh, we are ready, sir. Me too. Trey was so ready, he came in as a driver, so we're ultra ready. Hell yeah, I got my, uh, what's that dude's name from, uh, uh, that Mountain Dew commercial with the shorts and... Oh, yeah. I don't remember his name, but let's just call him Bobby. Aaron yeah, Bobby. Subway. Yeah, I got my shorts on. I got my Mountain Dew. I'm ready to go. Well, I don't think you're going to need it tonight, Trey. It's awful, awful cloudy. I don't believe you'll be working up too much of a sweat in there. Yeah, I noticed our championship three is all in the top five. Yeah, that's kind of funny, right? I mean, it's like they're racing for a championship. Got something on the line. Trying to prove something tonight. Uh, got a few spoilers with some also in uh, that Mecca fellow. But uh, like you said, your top three all in the uh, top five. You can, um, well, I'm sure producer, as he whispers my ear, the uh, graphic of their season stats are uh, coming up on screen. And speaking of their season stats, why don't we just go ahead and kick it off, boys, and grab all three of them and see if we can get them in a nice uh, tussle before we even start the race here. So we're going to pull them all three up at the same time? Yeah, all three at once. Everybody uh, pick one. Yeah, I'll don't pick start Paul. Getting... Hey, what's going on? There's two. Where's Peter? I got him. I got him. Here he comes. There he is. Too late again. Fucking Canada. We're just hiding yeah. behind. Well, we're going to do something a little different here, guys. Instead of interviewing you each individually, we're going to do you as a group. So we can uh, get your, you know, championship uh, rivalries going right here. See if we can boil some blood here, maybe. Perfect. Manufactured excitement is what we like to call it here. Yeah, yeah, or, looks like... well, well, yeah theatrical masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> This is how we roll at OCR TV. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, it's uh, I mean, it's championship weekend. Uh, Paul Ross, 19 starts, two wins. Richard Lafferty, 17 starts, two wins. Peter Short, four wins. Uh, it, are are one of you guys gonna have to win the race to uh to bring home this title? I think so. I, I definitely don't... think so. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I mean, Eric Mika is fast, and he didn't quite make it. But I think that in order to assure yourself the championship, you got to go out and win. So, what do you think it's going to take? Is it? Um, and we we know this track, the tire fall off is pretty ridiculous. And uh, you know what? Uh, almost two seconds over a lap is, uh, you know, uh, without giving away any secrets, man. Uh, are you guys going to try to play some tire strategy here? I, it's hard to say. I mean, it depends on what lane you're running, how much you're on the throttle, um, everything else, whether, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say right now without giving anything away. No one's listening. You can give it away. Yeah, except for uh, Peter and Richard. Just like George Strait, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those races where uh, you've got to mind your tires and try and be fast but save them and you know short pitting is definitely going to be a thing we saw it in the very first race that you guys did earlier this year uh that we did here for a preseason test so uh it's gonna be an interesting race hopefully there's lots of twists and turns like there were at phoenix and makes for an interesting race yeah we did do that preseason race and who won it i believe the mr 18 ah so, uh, Paul, you won that preseason race. Did this championship give you a little bit of advantage? Uh, yes and no. I don't think Peter was at the preseason race. If he was, uh, he must have gotten wrecked out or something. All, All right. right. Real, real quick before we let you guys go and uh, and uh, get up for your, your run for the cup, who makes the better cartoon racer? I saw some pretty good <laughs> ones. Paul Ross, Peter Short, Richard Lafferty. Who makes the better cartoon racer? 
I would have to go with uh, Richard. I don't know. They were all a lot of fun. It was really cool that Corey did that. Um, gives some some extra light into his final race. But uh, hopefully our cartoon racers can hit the track today. All right, guys. Uh, well, hey, before we get this thing started, man, you still got some time. Give us some shout outs, bro. I think first and foremost, need to thank uh, Corey for putting the league on. He does a hell of a job with all the time and effort that he puts into this thing. Uh, you guys for showing up two days a week to broadcast for us. And uh, Nathan Young for sponsoring this league. Yeah, I think Paul basically named everyone, but, you know, Corey does a great job. Um, Nathan for doing all he does. He not only sponsors this league, but he also uh, pays for the team speak that we all chat on and, and are able to communicate with each other. So that's pretty cool. Um, and thanks to OCR, you guys do a great broadcast. I'm looking forward to listening to these last few, last two races sometime this week. And uh, we'll hopefully be able to go back and watch some of the early races with y'all's commentary because it's been an awesome season. All right, Richard, you got anything for us? No, just uh, JTR, of course, and then what these other guys said. And, uh, we'll see how this plays out. Hopefully it's fun, everybody stays clean. Hopefully have a good race. All right, guys. Well, I don't doubt we'll be talking to one and one of you guys as uh, as champion uh, when this race goes down. So uh, looking forward to seeing how it plays out. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck, guys. Remembering where they went is the hardest thing, guys. Um, I think Lafferty was in the open lobby. If not, that's where he went. Oh, there you go. I figured they could find their way home. Yeah, I mean, you know, we don't have to hold their hands, hopefully. I like how you say, I hope we talk to one of you. I was like, if we don't, something massively went right. wrong tonight. <laughs> I was like, I totally don't know what to say here. <laughs> uh, well, good luck. Well, we've got just, uh, what, three minutes before we... Uh, Kick the doors here on the final race of the B car season. We're not kicking any doors, Thomas. We're going to get a nice big plastic explosive set up on the door and blow them open. I mean, that's between you and your government. So. I'm sure there'll be somebody showing up at my door momentarily. I'm curious to see. We saw in the um, peak, the uh, the NASCAR peak series here early, earlier in the year, that uh, the multiple grooves worked, but it wasn't an overcast day. So I don't know if that's going to have any effect on it or not, but it should. Should hopefully come into play here and make some uh, multi-groove racing here at Homestead. I hope so. It'll make for a lot of fun. So, any predictions for tonight, guys? Well, I just based on season stats, but, you know, that might not always work out. I'm going to say that uh, Peter Short's going to come home with the victory and his third title in the uh, three-wide racing league this season. Well, I'm going to go off recent momentum, and um, Richard's had a pretty good run here lately. He won at uh, Talladega, had a solid run at Phoenix coming into here, so I'm going to say Richard's going to shake things up maybe and uh, I won't say steal a championship, but he, you know his team considered, considers himself on Twitter the underrated team, so uh, we'll see if he can uh, maybe steal the show. Man, I was yeah, I was leaning that way. Uh, you know what, I'm going to go... I'm going to go a different track, though. I think Eric Mickey's going to win the race. Uh, he's fast here. We know he's not afraid to pull some strategy. But uh, I'm going to say Eric Mickey's going to be your race winner, but I'm looking for uh, number 18, Paul Ross. He's going to bring home the championship tonight. Well, the good news is uh, we're going to find out here in about 117 laps. So Do it. This uh, surely will be an interesting event. I mean, it's not like there's a championship on the line or something, Matt. No, they shouldn't go out and drive that hard, eh? Oh, let's just hope we don't have any uh, Scott Eckes two-to-go moments here. That's just, I don't know if my heart could take it. <laughs> oh, no, right? <laughs> no, I'm thinking these guys will be able to keep her out of the turn two wall on the last uh, two laps. But that's just me. 
Well, Cameron Rich said Dale Jr. is going to win the title, so clearly he needs to go. He's concussed. Uh, yeah, needs to take part of the uh, protocol there. Take you to the quiet room there, Cameron. What's the thing you do? You hold your fingers out or something when you're in the car? Or... Yeah, Dale, Dale Jr. doing his <laughs> own uh, doing his own exam in the car. I like Luis Salmaso's uh, prediction. Pain. That's a that's a Rocky Three uh, reference there. I think he calls it guys. a pain at Dega, didn't he? Yes. Oh. Too soon. Shots fired, but they are on the grid. Most of them, not all of them. Some of them are gritting. Uh, they have to get the covers out of the car. It was snowing here earlier today. That I wasn't said. snow. We're too close to Miami. That's a different. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. My it's bad. a different kind of snow. <laughs> Oh boy, we are off the rails already. Well, I guess there's no better place to start if you're Peter Short. He's going to run off P1. That's exactly where you want to be because if you finish there, it doesn't matter what anyone else does, you're going to become champion. So uh, alongside him, the always fast, looking for that first win of the season, Luis Salmaso. I think, boys, he might be your sleeper. Perhaps. But oh, back there, we have another playoff contender starting right behind Peter Short. The 18 of Paul Ross starting P3 to his outside. Uh, heartbreak at Phoenix for him, so he's going to see if he can redeem himself with a win. The six of Eric Mika, P4. All right, and our last championship contender, Richard Lafferty, the number eight. He's labeled himself underrated. We'll see what that number eight car can do. And uh, outstanding qualifying effort for that number two machine. Carlos Acosta will be starting six tonight. We're rolling off P7, we have Sam Close. He's a championship contender tomorrow night, but looking to uh, have some fun here tonight. And outside of him, we have David Wilson, uh, Mr. VR headset himself. Make sure you go ch check him out on Twitch. I'm sure that'll be entertaining to watch. Last couple lads in your top 10, the 87, Richard Hines. And to his outside, good qualifying effort from Mr. Brown today, the 64, Chad Brown. And we got Rusty Webb and that number 88 machine starting 11th. We got team owner going for a championship. His team is, but not the 83. Johnny Thomas starting 12th. Rolling off P13, we have uh, Jordan Till for Eisentech and P14, the man behind these setups uh, as of about halfway through the season, Matt Hackthorne, looking to just stop the bleeding after uh, a rough couple, well, a rough season if you talk to him. Something we haven't seen in a while, starting P15, the 07 Wade Laird is outside, 46 Kyle Hanshaw, rounding up the field, it's like a pine teat, the 90, Roy Lindsay. And some some other guy didn't grit Trey Landry. Ah, yeah. They couldn't find the car. Oh, did uh, Osirel repo it? Yeah, they, <laughs> they they told me it was parked by the hot hot dog stands, but it wasn't over there. We went to some cart fun. A <laughs> oh, yeah. vessel. Um, I, see, I see what she did there. Yes, yes. All right, boys. 117. See who's gonna get it in. Haven't said that in a while. So. Shouldn't be any um, restart shenanigans or anything. It's overcast day. B car should be pretty pretty straightforward on the restarts. Hopefully, that's what we can hope for. In one hand and green flag in the other. Good segue, I like it. You no. sure got a big jump. Once again, we'll see what we can look out. The outside line is just not that good. Almost three wide to turn one. Paul Ross thought better of that. Mention it there, uh, Trey. Uh, small hands with him already at P2. Definitely going to be, probably going to be one of those uh, guys you got to deal with all night long. Yeah, for sure. He's pretty quick at this track, and uh, we've seen in previous races. He's not a he's not at first taking some risk on the track. It's not. He's already looking for the lead on Peter Short. The one and two looks like he's gonna get it. I don't know if we uh, laid it out for everyone, but it's. Pretty much the NASCAR format. Your highest finish, you're just going to be your champion. No laps led, no halfway bonus, just a straight up fight. 
Carlos Acosta showed a little muscle here. He's already into the top five, running fourth. And Richard Lafferty got around Paul Ross already, so move him up to, uh, I think he's still in P5, but he uh, got around Paul Ross, so Paul's kind of faded back here at the start. And then we have a little bit of a gaggle, Richard Hines, uh, Rusty Webb, and Chad Brown. Uh, sort of like now, to say that. Good side-by-side -side racing going on further back. Jordan Peele, Johnny Thomas, Wade Lear, Corey Linzer. That's what this track's known for. I, mean, I see it all the time in uh, TV, and definitely once these uh, dynamic tracks have kind of aged in here, you can hopefully open up from top to bottom. Because you know, Matt, it's got that progressive banking. That was, that was the key thing in 2003 when they put it in. Yeah. There is a, there's a couple bumps here though that can really upset the car if you uh, hit them wrong. Especially, especially the cup car, I'm not sure about the B car, but definitely out of two is a major one. That seam what in three and four, right? Oh yeah. Gives me a nightmare thinking about that one. It's like top two already starting to put a little distance on Peter, who's got a fair little gap back to Carlos there. mentioned it there in the uh, pre-race there, Trey, you know, just because you can see that guy in front of you, you want to run real hard to track him down, but you, you do have to be mindful of those tires, because if we get strung out on a long run here, you can definitely, uh, I'm going to assume burn the right front off of these cars, just by the way they look, they don't look too tail happy. It's definitely not what you want to do, because you're looking at about 30, 35 lap run, and when she starts plowing here, it's kind of hard to get it stopped. We kind of see the trend with these these cars and and actually the league over the past couple of weeks. Not a lot of cautions. Do you kind of approach this race maybe as you would a road course and just kind of work it backwards to get to your window? I think it depends. Well, I think tonight is going to depend who you are. In Championship three. Well, we mentioned it last week. You kind of want to play off each other. If one does one thing. You might want to follow him down just to cover him. But uh, maybe if you're Eric or a couple of these other guys, you can maybe stretch it longer or or be more aggressive in the short pit. I don't I don't know how aggressive you're gonna be though because 117 laps, uh, about 14 gallons of fuel. Once into the season, you're not really gonna you're not gonna cut it too short. This is just gonna you're gonna add too many pit stops to the rotation. But maybe definitely the undercut for sure. We've seen that come to play past three weeks, I believe. Oh, we got George joining us. He says, uh, hey, gentlemen. I don't know who he's talking about, but uh, hey -o. Must be uh, some other broadcasting. Right? How dare yeah. he? <laughs> Battle here between Paul Ross and uh, Richard Lafferty. Ooh, Ooh, that, was sparks sparks touch there. There. that was some NASCAR drama. Got a Sam Ross's teammate behind him there, Sam Close, trying to find a way by these two. And I think Sam's going to be running tonight just to maybe kind of figure out how the track's going to turn or see how the rubber's going to lay down. Yeah, because that can greatly help you actually for the cup car. Richard had a pretty good run on Carlos there, but kind of lost the nose on exit. Already starting to see that. Well, it's no surprise, Carlos kind of trying to run the high side, but it looks like it's it's opening up from top to bottom already. That's what's going to make it fun. Oh yeah, more places to pass makes it uh, all the more better. Get in there, actually, make it stick. I don't know if yeah. cut a break there or what. Well, Laffer's had a nice run, though, coming up here into turn three, see if he's going to utilize it. Nope, going to ride back there. I'm hoping to follow Paul or I'll still here on Carlos. Easier said than done. Well, that's happening. Peter Short looking to get around this four car up here. Yeah, gonna have to drive it in there. Give him plenty of room there, so move Peter up to P2. Uh, Peter's kind of sitting in the catbird seat. He's running second. He's got about, what, two second lead over Paul Ross so he doesn't have to do anything aggressive just kind of ride and give what the track gives him 
Yeah, if anything, you might want to save a little because you know you've got that gap. You don't want to burn the tires off. Easier said than done. You, wanna, you always want to win the race, right? Well, of course, but, you know, you don't have to. Not right now. No, I mean, Lord, you still got multiple rounds of pit stops. Never know how the caution is going to play, but definitely just keep the car on the wall is uh, mission number one. You know, we, we, kinda, this. <laughs> right. you know, we talked about this in the uh, pre-race meeting. I'm hoping we'll get to see some green flag stops, Thomas, because, uh, guys, I, I think that's going to be the difference. I think we're the only ones hoping to see green flag stops. Yeah. This is one of the toughest pit roads to get onto, say, if you sit close to the wall a little bit in the end for turn three. Actually sped up, so. Because unlike uh, what you might have seen what, a couple weeks ago in the in the real NASCAR race, you cannot pit on with turn four. Here. You have to use the access roads coming in and off. And yes, they're a little slippery, so. Yeah, they're flat. They're going to have sand and dirt all over them. If you were diabolical in practice, you would have spun a little on those sand traps to kick some dirt up. This for drama. Oh, that's what we should have had you. Ah, oh, Trey, that's ah. what we should have join as, man. But either way, there's still dusty coming in, and then the pit lane here is really hard to see. Uh, the pit line coming in until you're right up on it. And you slam on brakes, and then yeah. it's only 45 miles an hour here, so. And I have piled into the uh, little oh, like yellow barrels. I don't think there's anything that you haven't piled into, Matt. Uh, well, GRC, once we get rally cross, I can pile into a hell of a lot more things. <laughs> right. <laughs> Coming soon. Two days, actually. American calendars. Yeah, that and our animated pit crews. So just when you thought you couldn't find your... Well, I guess you, you would actually be able to find your pit stall easier now because you're gonna you're gonna be yeah, the only you, one you can yeah. only see your pit crew so that's a good thing because i'd be forever running down the pit crews it's got a cost gonna surrender that position to sam close and put him up in the top five for the time being as carlos has a run coming back up behind him yeah, like Lafferty, he's still kind of stuck behind carlos here lost a lot of time to paul ross already he's gonna get the job done though exiting four not much of a fight from mr acosta like we talk about every week, it's one of those tough spots for the guys not in the playoffs. If you, you know, if you don't have the speed or they get the run on you, how hard do you really race them? You know. Yeah, that's especially that's tonight. Tough thing. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is for all the marbles, so you really don't want to hamper these uh, playoff guys at all. And if you're making time, it's fine. I feel like that's fine. But if you're holding someone up, it's probably best to pull over. Yeah. As myself in the window of. Going back and forth on uh, other broadcasts we've done. Lap cars versus faster cars and whatnot. Talking, are we talking about Cat D? <laughs> oh, God. Ah. oh, boy. Oh, I'm not going to touch that one. Meanwhile, Paul Ross, 18 car, slides by Salmaso there. Move him up to, uh, what's that, P3. Looks like Paul might have a few tricks up his sleeves here, boy. It's kind of slowly he's, maybe working on Peter. Man, he's running comparable lap times uh, with Peter, so we'll see if Paul, with that uh, getting by Luis, if he can uh, cut that gap a little bit. Now, someone we've talked about earlier, Eric Mickey, he kind of was like a cat licking his wounds there after the Phoenix race. Uh, do you think if he wins this event, would that be kind of less damaging or more damaging? Because he looks at it and says, if I would have made it, I could have won a championship. I don't know, ask uh, William Byron. Who's she? He, you know, he lost a truck title that yeah. way and then came back and won an Xfinity title. So, I mean, it's always good to win. So, I mean, you, you know, you can't change the past. It's not a cat licking his wounds, man. He said it actually hurt a little to take his playoff banner off this week. Hurt a little. For the life of me, I couldn't find a gif of ripping a band-aid off, so... Ah, that'd been perfect. Thanks a lot, Facebook, for letting me down. Come on! 
that we have Wade Lear uh, on pit lane for an unscheduled stop there. See they're sending Ron Malik over the wall for him. No damage on the car, so just uh, another aggressive short pitting. Yeah, last 22. That's setting you up for quite a few stops, but we'll see if she'll work out or not. No, he's done for the night. Electrical. I actually heard he had a hard time seeing out the right side of the car. Nope, not touching that one either. <laughs> Why? Big race here between Matt Hackathon and Richard Hines and Johnny Thomas battling for the uh, spot in the top 10. Even uh, even with this overcast, we started uh, Eric at 29.5. He's already fallen off to a 31.3 last lap. So even with the overcast, guys, the tires are still pretty aggressive on the tire wear. So for the track, it's still pretty aggressive on the tire wear. As you mentioned that, Thomas, looking at the timing, it's going. Paul, Paul Cross, yeah, He's Paul Cross up. is is closing in on uh, Peter Short here for the second position. Yeah, right about a tenth faster than those guys last lap. Actually, about three tenths faster than Peter. So the action's hotting up. He's and swinging that car into the corners like a racking ball. Don't count out Richard Lafferty either. He's right here with him. He still made his way by Sam Close there, so move him up to P4. Oh, we have the top uh, guys running for the championship, all with two, three, four. George already knows this. Yeah, don't touch that one. Yeah, George, I know. I'm not, I'm not touching that one. Do, 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 do. Still, uh, still some pretty impressive lap times from uh, Mika, but Peter's definitely the one struggling right now, about three tenths off these guys. And Lafferty and Paul Ross are almost running the same lap times. It was a couple uh, hundreds yeah, slower that last lap. Yeah, just a few hundreds. That's nothing. Actually was the quickest car that lap. Well, well, the quickest of the top three. Or, sorry, championship three, I should say. Luis Almaso waving his hand, saying he's coming in pit lane here. Take that long trip down the access road and try not to spin out. Like Steven says, uh, Paul for the B car champion. Yeah, we'll see. Looking good so far. He's uh, keeping up with uh, the hot shoe Peter Short there. Peter Short's really falling off. Yeah, he's. I don't know if he's uh, gotten out of his rhythm or maybe overdrove the car too soon. It's easy to catch him, though. It's another thing to pass him. As Matt clearly knows. Unless you turn them, but that usually doesn't end too well for you. Talking about well, myself. Yeah. Plate tracks. Last, right. last time I did that, I flipped somebody over, and they were... Well, they never said anything. They just left, so... So we're going to call that aggressive pitting by the four then because he did come back off the pit lane finally so he did lose a lot of time they're looking at his lap times uh, <laughs> near the end of that run he was out yeah uh, 31 8 well 31 yeah. fives eight yeah so, yeah yeah so that's, that's, that's not a bad call yeah. i mean what you have nothing to lose why not no exactly he's just coming here for a win so see if he can snag her this time he's been close many times he just couldn't find a way to seal the deal there's some guys already. I saw Chad Brown, looks like Rusty Webb, and they were rim riding already. All right, let's come with a run here, turn one. Not going to use it. Let's try to build up a little bit more speed and get him going into three. And All right, let's roll on that bottom yeah, really nicely. Cutting the center compared to Peter. Richard Lafferty still the fastest of these uh, championship three right now as well. The only downside is he's about a second and to, no, 1.2 seconds behind uh, this battle right now. We can still make that up, though. These guys start getting side by side. Yeah. And the only downfall for him is going to be looking at pit road here, probably around lap, what, 40? 
45 maybe? Yeah, 45 would probably be the outside window. Power off side figure. by side. And for him at the top of the leaderboard right now for the championship hunt. Maybe. Did give up. Yeah, he's got that high line rolling, but it's that 18's cut in the center pretty good. Peter's going to do the old pinch down there. Well, that worked very well. Let's call it aggressive side drafting for now. Some uh, essence of uh, Brad Keselowski there, maybe. Yeah, and Richard Lafferty licking his chops as he sees these guys side by side again. He closed in four tenths that last lap for them badly. Yeah, they both are in the eights to his four, so. That's when you're sitting there as Lafferty. Come on, wreck each other, then I can win this easily. Oh, it's never that easy. No, there's there'd always be something else to do. I mean, he doesn't I mean, really need him to wreck. He's he's there. I mean, he's and he's, he's been consistent. Yeah, he's, he's with him on speed this week. Yeah, and he's been consistently the same pace pretty well the whole race, and he's been faster here even before these guys went side by side. So maybe the long runs his uh, niche. Yeah, you know, maybe he kind of snookered this. And, oh, I didn't really. I'm not gonna over prepare for this or anything. Maybe he has, but maybe he's kind of set his sights on this race after he won Talladega. Yeah, Paul Ross just. Powered his way past Peter Storm on the outside there. He's like, if you're not going to let me go on the bottom, bud, I'll just uh, go around the outside, Larson style. I'm actually going to see if he can get up there and pass the 33. There's a sight set on the 18. Here's to see what Paul does now that he's cleared Peter. I got a feeling that 18's got a little more speed in it than he was uh, able to show kind of stuck in traffic there. Yeah, that's true, too. I mean, Eric's still up there hitting fours, so... Here's as though Peter's trying to start running the exact same line as Paul Ross. That uh, had a turn three and four there. It looked like he's kind of mirroring him. Still running that kind of traditional yeah. deadline, though. You know, go in, kind of cut down if you needed to turn more, and then drift out. Paul Ross going to stretch that lead, lead out for the, for the championship anyway even more. As their actual leader of the race, Eric McKee, is uh, checked out by about 4.6 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, it's like got Corey Lindsay on pit lane as well. Probably a little early pitting there. I haven't checked out, but I feel like if you got a caution now and recycle this field, I think it might be a little bit better show because these guys are are not really that much slower than Eric. This is no, they're right They got there, shuffled yeah. with it. You know, Paul Paul started third, but he, I think he felt like he like sixth on the opening run there. So. Like I'm Superman right now in the fresh, fresh tires. Luis Salmaso going to... To cut his way through these guys in the old rubbers. You better feel good now, because by the time they pit, they're gonna do. They're gonna return the favor right. to him. So. Yeah, he pitted. I think way too early. Now, this is gonna open the window up. If you find Peter Short, I think I'd be diving that thing down a pit lane in the next couple of laps, just based on how much he's fallen off. And he's going to as he dives down now. Our our voices to his ears. Once somebody listened to me, it probably won't work out, though. Oh, let's, let's cover that, too. Eric Mika said he did not listen to us at Phoenix. He thought of two tires on his own. I call BS on yeah, that Yeah, that's, that's not true. Eric right? I think. mean, he's he's a Democrat. He's never had an original thought. <laughs> oh, God. Rusty Webb, Matt Hatch. Ooh, Rusty Webb almost <laughs> maraudered the barrels, barrels there at the end of pit lane. Made him in without incident, though. Chad Brown also on pit lane. It's like Carlos Acosta was in and out as well. Peter has a good stop here. Well, they start on the right side and not the left, so that's usually a good sign. Yeah. Paul Ross and Richard Laffey are now down pit lane. Boy, I talked about that earlier. You're going to have to cover what he does. It doesn't really yeah. matter what your plan was. When he pits, you have to pit. So. And Eric Mickey still staying out on track. That one, I mean, he's got four seconds well, he, to burn. He just, so. yeah, yeah. He, just, he just does the opposite. Sam Close, I think, is in the oh, same boat. Looks like Richard Sam had Close. to back up just a little bit. Sam Close tried to make it into the pits there, and he cut her through the grass. Ooh. He's going to end up not be. That might be an unsafe pit entry there. I don't know. Did he go on the track any? Yes, he did. That's probably going to be an unsafe pit entry. Might get posted for that. Let's watch and see. Let's 
unsafe. I would almost kind of clear those if it was real life because it's not really an unsafe pit entry. It's no, like, that's true. You just yeah. over. I mean, you kind of penalize yourself by going on the grass. So. And Peter Shoy does cycle back in front of Paul Ross and Richard Lafferty. It's a and one Richard, lap advantage there. Yeah, and Richard and uh, as Trey mentioned, Richard had a pretty. Yeah, he's yeah, a bad he did, stop. Yeah. yeah, he slid through his pit stop just a bit. Had to back up, but that cost him big time. Like yeah, Eric's coming on the pit lane. And you need Jordan Teal. Oh, there's a whole slew of people there that have yet to get service. Oh, David Wilson coming down now. Or he's down and away, sorry. Yeah, the stop wasn't terrible for Lafferty, though. Still in the 14s. But the actual pit time is what I guess killed him there. 37, about a second and a half slower. Mickey here, see if he gets a good stop or not. It's like Chad Brown rolling back the pit lane here again. Not sure what's happening to his car, but uh, nothing good, I'm assuming. Showing Jordan Till as the current leader, but he's coming to pit lane as I speak. Just gonna cycle that four car back to lead, but for how long is the question. I'm interested to see if that uh, five car got posted for his uh, four um, right to the grass. Yes, because he is way down the running order now. He's in 14. Yeah, it's like they held him on pit road. Yeah, they all did. They get around Peter here maybe, but they both got around Eric through that cycle. Yeah, but Eric's got the fresher tires. That's something to keep in mind, though. He could have pitted... You kind of know that in the back of your head. You could have been in a lap, maybe two laps earlier, and stayed ahead of these guys and not had to worry about it. Would two laps really hurt your strategy? I don't think so. So something to kind of keep in the back of your head. And if you stay green, you do this again. Maybe pit a little sooner so you can stay ahead of them. If you can build that lead again, I think that's the key. You got to have about a what four and a half second lead. No, it's all ifs and buts, but you know sometimes you got to have candy and nuts. So. Yes, producer, I did. Eric Mickey on a rail right now. He's pretty well in his own zip code at the start of these runs, but we saw Paul Ross and uh, Richard Lafferty and Peter Short all kind of dealt off at the same lap times after a little while into it. Yeah, I think... Uh... Without a caution, that's going to be hard for Richard to get back in this one because he's going to have to have something happen to those guys now because he lost a lot of time through the exchange. Yeah, and that's really unfortunate too because Richard was contending all night, but it's only early yet. What are we, like 50 almost? Yeah, 40, 47 now of 117, so we still got well past half the race to go. Yeah, but he was right there on those guys' tail. Now he's, what, four and a half seconds back? Uh, yeah. You never give up. You've seen it before. You never, you never know what's going to happen with these. You could have uh, anything, net code, internet issues, iRacing crashes. Paul oh, Ross rolling that high side. Looks very good doing it, too. It's just really easy. Uh, Let Eric go just, by, though. Yeah, I, just, I was going to say, he doesn't need to. Again, these guys don't have to win the race. They just have to beat the other two. You can you can let Eric you can let Eric go out there and win the race and they just don't need to burn their tires up trying to race against him when they're not racing Eric Mickey. I don't know. Peter's gonna have to figure out something different because clearly that first run just didn't suit the car well at all. I don't know if he just uh, over abused the tires or just couldn't get in a rhythm or what, but he's gonna have to sort something out the second run or Paul Ross is just gonna run away with it.
it's kind of running away. Oh, uh, that's a terrible segue. Should be running down. Eric Mickey's continuing to uh, run down that four car lap by lap. Sam Close does unlap himself as well there. Unfortunately, uh, it's not going to be long before that other guy comes back to try and lap you again. Yeah. Uh, Eric did run the fastest lap last lap uh, about yeah about 1.3 seconds quicker than the current uh, lap by the leader. So. That's only minor. Just a wee bit. We need our uh, our strategy man Chuck. He's not racing tonight. He should be uh, in here telling us the uh, pit windows. And we get all uh, tuckered out watching the snowball derby today. So. I hear some uh, some promising kid won that. Gonna be a real talent someday. Yeah, that's how it should be, shouldn't it? Who won it? I didn't see anything right, about some it. Some crybaby Bush thing or something. I don't know. Some former cup champion, Kyle Bush or something. Oh. Shit. Figures. That's none of my business. Well, I think the best part about that race is you win the race, but no one cares that you won until you get out of inspection. You have to pass inspection before you yeah. are declared the winner. So everyone's like, did you clear the room of doom? Because if you didn't, we don't care. I'm like NASCAR, well, it doesn't matter. You can fail post-race tech and still keep the win. So. And Mickey is powering by right now. The four hour Luis Salmaso is in a Take back over that lead. Now, this begs the question, when does that four come back down pit lane? <laughs> what was it, 28 last Eight, time? Yeah, so about two laps if he sticks to his strategy. It's going to be a lot of you're, stops. You're going to have to, though, because right now he's hemorrhaging. Oh, yeah, he's one of the slowest cars on the track, so. More of only a couple in the 31s. I think Corey Lindsay was in one, but he was kind of in the wall a couple laps, so. It's going to be only a couple of seconds here now before Paul Ross passes the four. So I wonder if he's going to pit after all these uh, three get by him or if he's going to try to stretch this one out a little bit longer. Good question. Well, that's the well, problem he... with the track that's got so much fall off and you get no caution. Once that first pit stop and you adopt a strategy, you're kind of stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going to say. He needs to get a caution here soon to get back on the same uh, rotation as the rest of these guys because right now this is. There's a lot of blood coming out of that four car. <laughs> Ooh, Peter Short trying to get a run there and had nowhere to go with it. Man, at least didn't cut him no slack either. Kind of an odd spot to catch someone though if you can't really jump out of the throttle right there on the corner, corner exit. I mean, you can, but normally you end up plow on the wall, so. I don't see any Scotty small engine repair on that car, so it's probably not going to plow the wall too easy. <laughs> you need your Amish wagon fix, because he's got it. Are we allowed to say that? Sure, it's not a business anymore, so that's fine. Looking through, no other amazing battles happening at the moment. It's like Lafferty did get around uh, Carlos Acosta, so put Lafferty back inside the top five. Just miles behind his competition, though. Yeah, six seconds. That's terrible to say, too, because Lafferty looked like he was, uh, well, he was just as fast as both Paras and Peter Short, so. Hopefully we'll see a caution or something just for the sake of, uh, for his sake anyway. One of those, uh, debris cautions. Yeah. Ask Brett what he sees down there and a bunch of static and they throw the caution. 
I mean, I'm sure we'll get those soon, you know, with the damage model and pieces falling oh, off. God. Yeah, that's when somebody misses a bumper bear or something. Matt runs it over and gets two blown tires and dies in the turn. <laughs> two wall. Sounds like a great time. That sounds like Tuesday afternoon with the rally cross. So. <laughs> Oh, and oh, Luis yeah. Almaso is diving to pit lane now, lap, what are we, 60? 60, yeah. so it went a little further. But that's still, <laughs> still going to be... Whew. Uphill. Both ways. Shoveling snow. Yep. Back in my day, are we done with this? You walk five miles uphill both ways to school, ladies and gentlemen. While, uh, I'm just gonna wait there, kicking off the beaten path. Meanwhile, up at the, uh, the front here, the front of the championship three, Paul Ross has continued to open the gap on Peter. He's, uh, Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton. -ing. That gap. Nice. He's not uh, botossing it. We should uh, have a graphic soon there, Thomas. We need an opening the gap and a closing the gap graphic. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Are we going to measure it in feet like NBC does or, you know, something more relevant like... Something that's actually legit time. as opposed to, uh, yeah, as Ooh, opposed 107 to... 107 feet or 98 feet. I can't really tell the difference. It's hard to do, producer, when you don't know who's going to win. It's alright, we'll call it out, producer, it's fine. He's on sabbatical. I like how our viewers can hear the one-way conversation and think she's just talking to yourself. I said producer. <laughs> But at any rate, uh, let's see what's going on in this race. Ooh, Corey Lindsay hard on the wall through one and two. No. Or is uh, definitely taken, taken, well, taken, taken Liam Neeson hits there. Oh, God. Definitely uh, not turning. I don't think that's going to help it turn anymore with a toed out right front. Or would that be toed in? I guess that would be toed in. Yeah, toed in, yeah. Is that the toed, any? Fine. All I know is his toe up. <laughs> Hashtag elbow. Uh -oh. <laughs> Looks like uh, Hanshaw and Chad Brown in a little battle back there behind Peter trying to figure, like, hey, we're on fresher tires, but we don't really want to mess you up here. And we're five laps down. <laughs> well, four and five. And uh, if they don't be careful here, they might be, uh, they might come to the 6 11 rule. That would be yeah. awful. A little bit of issues, and everybody kind of darts around and like hornets trying to figure out uh, the safest route around. Best and you have the speed. Uh, yeah. Solid night so far. Nothing spectacular yet, but it's kind of hanging in there. He scraped the wall there, and he lost, I would bet, about 25 to 30 mile an hour. I, I'm not a fan of these cars. It's such a momentum car anything that kind of breaks that up you just die it's kind of like driving a golf cart uphill or something <laughs> a lot of hills tonight which is odd because we're in florida and there are no hills in florida so. uh, it's just hipsters <laughs> and a lot of bath salts we hear i hate so much with the things they choose to be If I ever see somebody wearing a romper, I will literally shave your head bald. So then we'll see how things actually work out for your hashtag hipster lifestyle. I heard Thomas, short. I heard, I heard Thomas Fredericks draws a Ferrari in a romper. <laughs> That's how he ends up upside down. No, you drive a Ferrari in a romper and you get it wrecked by a rainbow car. What more could you ask for? I mean, in a the Ferrari. Is now uh, knocking Crocs. I'd like to, you to know, sir, I wear Crocs in the summertime. Uh, okay. 
We're now accepting hipster. applications for Matt's position here on the CR2. <laughs> And Crocs are again. came out like 15 years ago. Okay, once again, Matt, this is a one-sided conversation. Shut up! <laughs> uh, but yes, we go on record. Crocs are for like eight and under. I see. It's just so much comfortable. What the hell will have? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I have to work. So. Uh, Outs outside, you know, where your feet kind of get dirty. Corey Lindsay, it's Corey Lindsay, Lindsay yeah, he's finally pitting after uh, trying to move that wall. I mean, doesn't Matt work at like a salmon fertilization clinic or something? Good God! <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's where they extracted the sugar out of maple syrup. Yes, <laughs> that's a thing, you know. What? You pick sugar out of maple syrup. Like you Why? You turn it into actual sugar. Because not everyone wants syrup, man. God. They should all be dead. What is up there, Wendell? Sugar cane's kind of hard to grow. When it's like frozen eight months out of the year. Hey, we just got snow now for the first time since... March? It's 72 today. Or yesterday. So. You're the reason for global warming. You're right. I am. I throw the tires on the fire every night. <laughs> uh, Johnny Thomas makes his way around the 88 of Rusty Webb. Put him up in the seventh position. That was a hard fought battle there. This is like a 15 lap battle. He's clawing Just away the time off to get it. ready to pit again. <laughs> yeah, we still got a little ways before you get pit again. Tell you what, Peter. Yes. I'm just saying he's three seconds behind Paul Ross and that number 18 machine. He's just kind of out there cruising. Oh, he's on cruise control now. He knows Peter's just out to lunch. So, and this, with a fixed setup, there's not a lot you're going to do other than change your driving style. So, hashtag uh, going for fours in trouble, boys. Yeah. But uh, Paul Ross looking to get his first iRacing championship here at Three Wide Racing League. I believe he has one on a previous platform. That'd be PS3, PS4, mm. Xbox One, Wii, Switch. I think it was the Wii with uh, Sega Wii Genesis. Bowling. Oh, Sega. Oh, I think he was boy. like the Three Wide Tetris champion. Oh, maybe Atari? Back yeah. in 1906. 06, yes. <laughs> Oh boy, he's completely off the rails. I, I was trying to figure out what he won on before, but I couldn't find it. If somebody can enlighten, uh, enlighten us in chat, that would be super coolio. Short, it's almost 80 in Atlanta today. Wow, you guys must have been a little warmer than us. It was kind of cloudy and... I mean, it wasn't it wasn't cold, it was like 66. So. Click, oh, the, click. The big chill down's coming though, boys. Get ready. Now let's oh, go down to 50. Yeah, Three it's wide to with Peter Short and Chad Brown there. Yeah, we're talking like 49s for the high. That's crazy. Oh, no. Oh, Matt, when's the last time we took a 30 degree, 30 degrees shift and change in what? Two days? <laughs> actually, actually, this fall. It was it was pleasant yesterday, though, because it was like 70 something for the high and like and 50 for the low. So it wasn't even cold at night. It's almost like we're here at Homestead. And while Peter did uh, navigate through the map traffic there. This is what happens in long runs, so we go on tangents. I, I can't for the life of me figure out why people stay watching us. <laughs> Jordan Till on and off pit lane. Oh, Peter oh, Short coming down pit lane. That's what it's for, right? Tangents. Now, Lafferty stayed out. He could have uh, covered Peter, but I guess he decided he didn't need to. Whoo, Peter Sells are in there. Let's see if yeah, he made that. that or not. Yeah, you got a road up. It's actually 50. I thought it was 45 here. Now, all eyes will be on Paul Ross as he's going to be coming down pit lane as well. Let's see. Richard Laffey must have to follow this one. Unless he's going to hope for a caution. That'd be a roll of the nice dice. Guy. He's staying out. Yeah. Yeah. 
Dun, dun, dun. Well, realistically, too, guys, he cannot make up that time unless he does have a caution. So this might not be a bad idea. Well, you got to do something different, right? Yep. First off, Peter Short, Paul Ross still navigating his way down the uh, pit lane. Johnny Thomas coming to pit lane. Telling that last little shot to get into pit lane, and it's like it's so hard to get uh, the car woed down to that. Oh, yeah, for sure. You're like, whoa, Nelly, whoa. Race leader Eric Mickey coming down pit row. Don't speed. I'm close. For Don't sure. Order. Peter shows me close. No, Paul Ross should retain the uh, points lead here, depending on his exit of pit lane. Actually, it's going to be close. Well, at the moment, Richard Lafferty will... Uh, oh, that's correct. He did leader. not pit, he's but it looks like coming he's coming down lane. this time. So he's going to lose a fair amount of time because there's Paul and Peter right there already, so... Yeah. And that access road is like... Dangerous. Still, still have the flashbacks of when Frederick's uh, spun in the grass. And... Seems to be a championship as an owner. Yay! Good job, Frederick. Down and away for Hackathon there. A little John Force burnout in the pit lane. Thing if we stay green, that one just what two inch slide through his box of Richard Lafferty is killing his chances here. I mean, that's that's something you have to carry all the way till next next season. Not to beat this like a dead horse, but that's almost as bad as hitting the wall with two to go when you're leading. Yeah, oh, wheel your almost. way right into a retirement party. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, God. There's more inside jokes here than the uh, Russian election of last year. Chad Brown coming down pit lane. Gotta be careful. Okay, actually made up some laps. I was saying he was, they were getting close to the six, six uh, lap down there. But they've made up a couple. Oh, so. Ross. Stretched out to the second. Oh, well, two second lead now over Peter Short almost. We saw Moss, although he's your leader as of now. That might change before too long. It's Eric Mickey is. <laughs> yeah, about uh, half yeah. a lap. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, you're running 31 3 to Eric's 29 7. Good God. Second, 1.1 seconds is what the uh, change was on that lap. So we're getting what about five to seven laps maybe through the rotations and leading? Maybe 10 at most if you're lucky. So if you could, I mean, you'd have to time it right at the end where you had a 10 lap cushion on Eric. Yeah, that's gonna be 10 lap. He didn't uh, give Eric any room as he went through, but. That's your prerogative. I mean, getting a little loose so he can't just drive right by you. Although, I mean, the tires are just looking. You can just see it just motors away from him. It's like he's got extra horsepower, boys. That's those four freshies. Hackathorn does a little spark show into three there. Corey Lindsay tagged the outside wall again. He does not like that wall tonight. He's trying to move it, but that's a long way to move it from here to Texas. So, As he's clutching it. Looks like I was going to say. He's trying to fuel again. <laughs> Is this going to be the race where he can stretch it and uh, make it all fuel? Uh, when did he pit? No, there's no way. That's, nope. We're not even going to get down that one. Interesting, to say the least. And Louis Salmaso came down pit lane. Not sure if that was mentioned. No, it was not. He already pitted again, so that's gonna. That's. That's pretty early. Duh. 
like really really early earlier than it should have been hmm because it should have what was it, it was 30 well 28 what to say 30 60 should have been 90. hot I'm just saying, I lost wise pulling out that early. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, George, he's a lonely chatter tonight. Yeah, normally there's a few chatty Cathy's in there. I guess uh, Kevin Finn's uh, busy in the food court. <laughs> Well, produce caution we apparently as we're going to yeah. run through the field. Oh, yep. Caution. Where's the leader at? Jesus. I can't find anybody out here. Eric Mickey. I know who he was. I was just trying to find him on track. <laughs> All right. Are we ready, producer? We're running through the field. We have Eric Mickey, the, uh, the heartbreak of last week. Maybe gets uh, a little redemption this week if he can keep her P1. Looking to uh, seal the deal here and get a win at one of his favorite tracks, Homestead Miami Speedway. But uh, still got a long way to go before we can uh, have that happen. And the guy atop the championship standings right now, P2, you have Paul Ross in that 18 machine. So we can close the deal here and get his first win on the iRacing platform. First championship win, sorry. <clears throat> and running P3, another championship three contender. Peter Short kind of struggling on the long run here. He's about a uh, second and a half behind Paul Ross. See if he can uh, reel him in. Another guy just hoping, pleading for a caution right now. There's going to be debris everywhere, probably throwing water bottles, and some padding out the truck like or the car like Mike Crafton did that one time. Richard Lafferty, 17 and a half seconds off the leader and about 10 seconds behind Peter Short right now. So desperately needs a caution to get caught up because honestly, his lap time's pretty competitive. And the last guy in your top five right now, we have Carlos Acosta doing a fantastic job right now. Uh, probably his uh, best run of the season that we've seen so far. And run a P6. We got league owner, team owner, Corey Lindsay, that 90. He's just kind of knocking down the walls and uh, still got the, four, got the shiny side up. He's running sixth. That's on, that's on uh, hard to believe he's that high up because that car hit the wall pretty hard a couple of times. Uh, speaking of hitting the wall, hasn't done it much tonight or any at all. It's the guy behind him just did right there. Oh. Rusty Webb, P7. Another quiet night so far. Looking maybe see if he can sneak into that top five before, uh, before the night's over. As we just saw, changed hands. Johnny Thomas took over the eighth position from David Wilson. He's... Uh possibly going to be a championship team owner if uh, Richard Lafferty can seal the deal so you know he's going to be cheering for the eight, that eight machine tonight. Well, we got our VR man, David Wilson. Catch him on Twitch. He's running currently ninth position. Yeah, but that was entertaining to see as you probably can see the sparks to the VR there. Uh, the last car on the lead lap, another guy desperately wanted to caution as he just bollocked up that first round of pit stops there and never recovered. Actually, just uh, has the leader right on his uh, what? Not even a second behind him, Eric Mickey, but Sam Close, not not going not going bad. I mean, the, as far as competitive wise, just uh, needs a needs a lucky break with a caution here to get caught up. Cause what's his lap times? So, eh, yeah, thirty point seven. I mean, Eric ran a thirty point six. A lot of guys just hoping for a caution to get caught up and reset here. When it stays green, you just kind of go through the motions. Matt knows about going through the motions. Motion carried. I tell you, Eric's just kind of quietly stinking up the field tonight. It's led 80 laps and uh, I haven't talked about him much because, uh, well, he hasn't been involved in much. <laughs> no, just kind of came out here to do what he wanted to do. Maybe, uh, you know, I'm sure we mentioned it already. He wanted to be in this championship three. Just didn't didn't have the right break at uh, Talladega or Phoenix. But 
what better way to end the season than winning homestead? So. Small hands or not, he's going to try and get the job done. Lindsay down pit lane again. The final time, most likely. So he had a little bit too much drink. He's weaving in there. <laughs> Just uh, clearing the tires off to get a good tire check coming in. He probably isn't fixing up what he wanted to uh, take here on this pit stop because I usually do that on track and pound the wall down. What's start clicking there? buttons on pit lane. You start swerving around. Going about Boy. 10 miles an hour slower than you should be. Oh, oh, Fredericks. Oh, buddy. There we go. I think he's getting service now. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh man, that is not how that car should be in that pit stop. That happened to me on more than one occasion as well. But just lucky enough to not have some. Oh man, he missed it twice, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the good news is when the uh, pit crews come out, the spotter will now count you down to the pit stall. So. That's pretty cool. I didn't know there was already an app. Um, I think if you Google sim racing apps, bring one in the chat. George, I guess, since you're in the chat. They had an app that already did that. It would uh, count you down already. So, so Google it. So Google, Corey Lynch is still on pit lane here. Huh? Is he speeding or did he just say, screw it? Uh, he's not, uh, the driver is missing from the vehicle. Okay. Could be the work thing too. Taking a wee, refilling the bourbon. That's odd though, because I mean, he was running top 10. Was, you know, I mentioned he was in what, sixth before he pitted? So. Yeah. Interesting. There you go. Closing in here in the end of the race. I have 17 laps, or sorry, 18, I guess, right now. No, I'm 17. That was right. First time. Numbers, hard things. Oh, the 83 almost got to the side of the 88 there through turn three and four. This race long battle between these two. I'm surprised that didn't that code. Right? <laughs> that was awfully close. We've seen some pretty close battles the past couple weeks that haven't uh, resulted in any net code, so maybe we've turned the tables on server net code there. Oh, how the turntables. Turn. Oh, how the turntables turn. <laughs> I think we have enough shirt quotes to last us about a year. Speaking about uh, turning through the field here, Eric's caught up to the back of Johnny Thomas. So it's, I guess you can... Uh, now that went on to his performance there, Trey. That's eighth place he's getting ready to lap. Uh, Eric Mickey's kicking ass and taking names as of right now. Of course, I mean, that happens when a race stays green, you know. Like we mentioned, just a couple bobbles on pit lane, you lose four, five, six seconds. Ten, <laughs> well, 15, 15 percent close that one time. Rusty Webb's right back into Johnny Thomas' wheelhouse right now, so the race-long battle continues between these two. Wheel is damage loose. on that right front corner, too, that 88 car. Oh, there's going to be more there as he gets the wall. Contact with the 83. Yeah. Saved it. Wow. Ooh. Have you ever. Right. I think somebody's elbows are getting itchy. I hope not. Another path, but I think everyone's made their final pit stop except that four yes. car. Yeah. The four is on the it's an eleven. They need a lap down. So yeah, that is not. It's not worked out very well for him. And up... Eric just put sixth place to lap down. So God, cars on the lead lap. Yeah. Soon you're wishing I always had those random mechanical failures. It's too good. He's too good, Cole. Next victim will be, well, Jordan Taylor's already allowed down, so. 
I don't believe he can lap anyone else. Carlos is pretty far ahead, so. Oh, wait now, the battle for the championships looking Paul Ross in huge favor as he's leading Peter Short by three seconds. It's like point out that I picked Paul Ross. No, you didn't. Sure I did. No, you didn't. Sure I did. Producer, go back to the tape. Oh no, we uh we already copied over that. <laughs> hey, right now this race <laughs> is playing out the way I predicted it. <laughs> We're inside of ten laps to go here now, so get everything you got. I mean, Paul Ross has done what he has to do, man. He just he's he's managed a good race. Well, he's kind of other than not winning, he's kind of picked up where he left off from the preseason preseason right. test. He just kind of ran a perfect race, race pulled uh, the right pit strategy and everything. So. Of course, Morning, up in the wall up there. I'm not sure who that is has helped that Lafferty had that problem and Peter Short just yes. hasn't been very competitive on the long run so it's a shame I'd love to see one of those uh, side by side finishes but it doesn't always work out that way it still was a pretty exciting race from uh, flag to flag so far knock on wood that we will not have another or have the first caution yeah he, well there's still time for a restart we're getting, getting closer to where you wouldn't be able to restart so and George calls you out there, Thomas. No, you didn't. He's correct on that one. George, don't make me take your moderator away. <laughs> you guys remember what is this, too well. Communist oh, Sweden. Wait. No, oh, it's communist YouTube. God, clearly. <laughs> making his way by the 88 Rusty Webb has a sight set on the 83 Johnny Thomas here for the next couple of well, probably half lap two laps I'll tell you a car it wasn't too long ago David Wilson was with Johnny Thomas and uh, Rusty Webb but David Wilson is powered away from these guys he's up to P6 first car lap down right behind Eric gonna turn the tables here Fortunately, I don't believe they'll get to Carlos in time, so. We're getting close to that window or the next flag lender here. So. Oh, now I'm your bro, George. Okay, okay. I don't want to jinx Hackathorn here, but he's sitting to get a top 10 here after some struggles all season long. So I'm sure I'll be pleasantly happy with a top 10 or just a finish in general, not a, not a day. Right. DNF or computer issues or work, work. point there now with the next flags and end this race and Eric Mickey is close to uh, closing out this season with a win and as it sits right now Paul Ross leading the championship hunt yeah everything's looking pretty for these guys at the moment uh, we have to have something drastic happen here to uh, change anything like I said a caution's going to end it so we need something to happen and stay green So far, so good. No, well, no real dramas tonight. So. Johnny Thomas pulls over to allow the 18 to Paul Ross to get by without incident. I just look at me in a championship photo. <laughs> <laughs> good way to do it. Stay right behind me. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, why not? Stay right with him. Like, hey, that's my car. Yeah. Two to go. <laughs> it's one of those staged uh, Corvette finishes. Thank you. 
until the wall right in front of Paul Rawls. No damage there. That about make you shit your britches, though, if you were uh, Paul Ross. Just hoping they didn't come careening off the wall in front of you. Taking the white flag here, Eric Mickey. Still your leader by about six seconds. Paul Ross, the one looking to win his champion, his first iRacing championship here in the Nathan Young Designs B Car Series, working through turns one and two. This will be uh, extra special too because we've already heard next season this this car won't be the main lower series. They're moving to the trucks, so that will get another turn four. Eric Mickey wins. Paul Ross brings it home like a wrecking ball champion. <laughs> <laughs> Nation Young Designs B Car Series. Congratulations, Paul Ross. That was a uh, and how fitting. Uh, Paul, Peter, and Richard finish two, three, four. Yeah, it's like uh, it's destined to be there. That was some uh, great race, and we were flag to flag, 117 laps, no cautions. Once again, it's it's pretty much how we started our three wide broadcasting, a caution free B race at Homestead. So once again, went smooth, clean. Just a couple pit issues or some people that kind of shook up the, the points. I mean the uh, championship battle, but other than that, uh, you know, just a normal competitive B race. We have uh, Paul Ross is burning it down there. Google burnouts. <laughs> Eric's like, okay, you won the championship, but I won the race. Oh, I see they're going to bend up their nose. Oh, now gonna, we're going to do. Yeah, here we go. Tip to tip. <laughs> oh, wow. They're actually doing a good job of that. Make sure there's no docking involved. There. Oh, God. This one hell of a smoke show. Well, that was pretty cool. Let's get a uh, Robin Miller down here to grab onto these guys and bring them up into the booth for us. Robin Miller, Jesus! <laughs> I think we need to get Chip down there to smack him in the back of the head. Yeah, concussion central. All right, well, let's make the jump and uh, start the celebrations. Woo! You know it. All right, I got a race winner. Stunk up the show. Led 102 of 117 laps. Just missed the playoffs. Oh, man, what could it have been? But you end your season on a high note, Eric. Winning Homestead. Tell us about your race, bud. Yeah, man, it seems the only thing that went wrong tonight was I didn't have the blue banners on the thing. Um, it's one of my favorite uh, ovals to race that so I did, was, felt pretty good coming into tonight setup felt really good and uh, you know just hit that just find that line that you can be disciplined on and make it work um, you know no cautions kind of helped out uh, with just pace being able to settle everything um, shame to uh, shame to see the series go at, knowing that it's the flagship series for this league um it was a fun season and i'm glad i at least made a mark in it and i just want to say congrats to uh paul ross on his championship and uh you know i'll be honest i was pulling a little bit from a ford teammate and friend over there peter um this dings in his uh chance to take all four championships this year but it was a good season congrats to paul he he did what he had to do to get it all done uh well, I was going to say, I think he covered all of it, but uh, congrats on the dominant win tonight there, Eric. Any plans to uh, maybe tackle the Truck Series and the Cup Series next year here in 3 wide? The plan for now is be full-time in the Cup Series. Um, that's still kind of not solidified yet, but that's the plan. Um, and if I don't work my way into a TV booth somewhere, then uh, I will probably run as much of the trucks as I as I can.
but all that's going to be determined probably within a month before the season gets underway, but looking forward to it. And we know nothing can, good can come from Canada, but uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Eric, uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, you probably don't know this, and but once you go back and watch this uh, awesome replay of a uh, awesome broadcast, you'll see how I picked you from the race, and you did not barrel roll down the front stretch. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Chuck's job, and I didn't see him tonight. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Well, hey, congratulations on the win, man. Uh, you know, look forward to seeing you next season. Uh, I expect big things from you in the in the Cup Series and, uh, of course, in uh, Scars as well. Yeah, and no, I just want to – I'll go ahead and take your line away from you and do my shout-outs now. Um, I uh, want to give a good – big old shout-out to Nathan Young Designs, uh, sponsoring this series all season. Hope to see them back. Um, and Corey Lindsay – everything he does for the league in the season um, in general. Uh, Cameron Rich for admitting uh, this series. Uh, things are looking really good for the series. So, uh, yeah, just thank everyone who makes it possible to come out here and race. All right, Eric. We appreciate it, man. We look forward to seeing you again in the future. Uh, who we got? Do we, though, Trey? <laughs> nah, not really. Peter? What about Richard Lafferty? Oh, he's down there. Okay, yeah, I didn't have my team speak down there. All right, I got him. He finished third, but man, Richard, what could have been? You showed a lot of long run speed there in the uh, the first segment. Green flag pit stops came around. Looked like you slid in the box just a little bit too far, put you just a little bit far behind, but unfortunately, you never got the caution to, to, to catch back up. But uh, still, you got to be proud of the effort that you've uh, put in tonight. Yeah, I was competitive over a long run. I couldn't run with those guys on a short run, but I caught Paul and Peter right there at the end of that first run. And yeah, I slid through my box, and then I didn't even, I thought I had nailed it and didn't even realize I did it. So I just sat there for a second like an idiot. And I, that put me about, I don't know, I probably lost four and a half to five seconds to, uh, Peter and Paul on that one, and I just really couldn't make that up. Those guys were really fast. Yeah, but still, like uh, Trey had mentioned, you you know you had the speed. Just unfortunately, uh, well, I think you're kind of in the boat with a couple people, and especially Sam Close, just never caught that caution that you needed to catch back up. But uh, regardless, you still you know the past uh, few races here, you've really shown the turnaround. And uh, Johnny Thomas had mentioned you guys are kind of the underdogs, even yourself underdogs coming in, but. I think you maybe turned some head tonight and uh, showed them, hey, look, straight up, I think we can uh, run with you guys. Maybe they got the message uh, for next season. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Um, this is the first race all year I actually practiced for, and I ran okay. I mean, those guys are fast. I mean, what else can you say? Eric was real, real fast, and Paul was almost right there with him. So do the best you can. Let's see how it turns out. Well, I know, I know you guys had that uh, Twitter contest going on, man. Uh, 20 I racing credits and a hat. I can understand if you don't give away the credits, but are you going to give away a hat to a lucky fan? I think uh, I think it was Paul Ross that really liked those hats. Are you going to send him one? I don't even have one of those hats. I want one. Uh, John, <laughs> Johnny does a good job of uh, running our little social media account for our little cartoon race cars. And uh, I think he does a top-notch job for uh, this kind of thing. All right, Richard. Well, hey, uh, congratulations on a valiant effort. Just uh, one mistake cost you a chance at the at the championship, but uh, still great season for that number eight machine. Couple of wins this year. Uh, one last time this year, man. Give us those shout-outs, bro. All right, man. Same old JTR. Uh, you guys, OCR, we appreciate it. You guys do a great job. And uh, Corey, Nathan, it's just fun to race. And, uh, appreciate it, everybody. All right. right, let's. Uh, hopefully somebody told Peter Short 240 characters or less. That's what I told him. All right, because wasn't words, but. Here he is. Coming up just a little short. No pun intended. But uh, Peter just. You just didn't have it tonight on the long run. Paul Ross, 
Just had you by a little bit, but that was enough. But uh, can't be disappointed with your season four wins this year. A uh, what was it? The uh, the 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 I Rock Championship. Uh, going for a championship tomorrow night. Got to be pleased, but then again, got to be a little disappointed in your effort tonight. Yeah, I it you know, it's that one race, one championship uh, thing. Uh, Homestead is just awful track for me. Um, you know, Paul said it earlier at the beginning of the race. He said, uh, maybe, you know, maybe Peter crashed in the, in the preseason race. No, I didn't crash. I just, I just could not figure out the track and, uh, I still can't figure out Homestead. Um, uh, you know, you have your good tracks, you have your bad tracks, you have tracks like Phoenix, where last week was really good for me. Um, but you know, it's tracks like this where I need to learn how to be a little bit faster and conserve my tires. I felt like my short run pace was probably there i could have pushed it a little bit more but man i was trying to save my tires that but uh, all three runs and i think my last run i started to figure something out and uh, i just figured it out too late uh, i think over that last run i might have gained a couple of tenths on paul over you know versus the run before yeah i short pitted but um you know i just think i came up a little bit short and uh you guys kind of, kind of put it right well, nothing, nothing to hang your head about. I mean, it was a, on paper, that was probably you know a dominant season. To you, unfortunately, with the uh, NASCAR playoff system, you kind of end up with this Homestead race, and you end up with a little crapshoot there. And unfortunately, you just uh, didn't have the the long run speed. But does it have you a little worried for tomorrow night? Maybe. I mean, you know, you said you kind of found some at the end, but I think that might help you translate to a Cup car. Or you feel like it's just going to be a completely different feel tomorrow night. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, learning something a little bit there at the end is going to help tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, like, like you guys said, it's, it's a little bit of a crapshoot, you know. Um, but it's up to me as a driver to pick up on tracks like that. I mean, you look at Eric. I mean, he absolutely laid, was, laid one on us tonight. He was so, so fast. So small hands. It is those small hands. Uh, man, something about those small hands. I guess you save some tire or something. I, I felt like, you know, I was keeping up with Eric, and then all of a sudden, uh, on that very first run, he just started to pull away, and I'm like, oh, my God. And then behind me, everyone was catching me. So, um, you know, as a driver, I just got to pick it up at Homestead, and hopefully a little bit of what I learned tonight can transfer over to tomorrow. Well, I imagine you could, uh, you know, Eric's probably not doing nothing tomorrow night. Maybe you can hire him as a technical advisor to maybe <laughs> help you out. Because uh, Eric is very good at this track. Yeah, he definitely has some speed that we don't have, so. All right, Peter. Well, you're no stranger to the deal, man. Uh, give us those shout-outs, brother. Uh, first off, I want to thank Drew Eisman um, for dragging me over here to race in this league. I hadn't really been doing any any form of racing competitively in about four or five years um all throughout college and so it was kind of cool to get back in the car and and do a long season like this it's a really long season nine months and uh, all the eyes and tech teammates have, have helped me along the way um i ran this b car uh drew wanted me to run this b car so i could get some extra seat time you know nights like tonight when i learn a little bit on the sunday night we'll be able to transfer over to monday that's that's why i ran this b car I um, want to thank all my teammates, Jordan Teal, Cameron Rich, uh, Race Clark, Kevin Finn. Kevin wasn't here tonight. Uh, he wasn't able to make it. I um, want to thank Corey for running the league. He does a great job. Uh, it's been a really fun racing in this series this year. We had, uh, I think he sent out a, a message midweek basically saying that the one issue that we had with the series this year uh, both A car and B car was the spell of B car races that were not very clean. That there were a lot of cautions, and obviously by the end of the season that got cleaned up. Corey jumping out of the car was pretty cool. Um, so really, thanks to him, he's made a lot of fun to run here with these guys uh, week in and week out. Uh, Nathan Young for sponsoring the series. That's absolutely awesome. We thank you for everything you've done and and for paying for the team speak and uh, really helping the the league get to where it wants to be. Um, and then lastly, thank you to OCR. Well, actually not lastly. I got one more after this. Sorry, guys, making your thing run long. Um, but thanks to OCR. You guys are awesome. Make for a really awesome uh, commentary. And you guys are a lot of fun to listen to. So thank you all. And lastly, want to thank 
all the B car drivers that I raced against this year because each and every single driver out there made it a fun and interesting experience. Um, you know, it's, it's good when you can look forward to racing uh, on a track and know uh, that people around you are going to race you hard but clean. And uh, there isn't going to be any form of funny business on the track. So thanks to everyone and uh, hope to be back next year and I'll see you all tomorrow night. All right, Peter. We're looking forward to it, man. All right. Thank you. All right. Going to have to charge him for going over 240 characters. Right? Though. I think I'm supposed to wait for a cue here. <laughs> You should know, Wendell. I have no Fs to give. <laughs> it's because you pulled out too early. <laughs> nope, I don't. <laughs> oh, we're waiting for... Uh... I think I won, didn't we? <laughs> All right. I got him. Like Your champion. Coming in like a wrecking ball. Driving that number 18 machine. You're Nathan Young Designs B Car Champion. Paul Ross. Tell us about it, brother. I just, I, it's still setting in, I think. The way that this season started and, you know, up till the last five or six races, I didn't think there was a snowball's chance in hell that we'd even be competing for it. But uh, overall, it was a good race. Um, that first run, Peter stretched out on me pretty good at the start and I reeled him in and after that uh after that I guess it was uh smooth sailing for the most part uh yeah I mean it wasn't we didn't think it was gonna be smooth sailing there Paul we thought uh they might have some more competition competition coming up with Richard but uh had some pit lane issues there but definitely you've uh you've got uh Homestead's number here we mentioned you know in the preseason race you were the car to beat and tonight other than eric's domination you were the uh the best championship car tonight just uh one of those tracks that suits you uh pretty well i guess yeah i've uh if i don't get wrecked i usually run good here um i want to say i have seven or eight wins at the track in this league um but yeah eric he was in uh he was in a different zip code tonight Canada? <laughs> eh? Yeah, he's checked out. Anyway, that zip code that Eric was in, it doesn't matter because you were in the zip code that counts. Uh, you finished tops of the championship three. How does it feel to be a, a Nathan Young Designs uh, iRacing, as, as far as I know, your first iRacing championship? Yeah, this is my first one. I have... Uh... I went back to back to back on consoles, and then uh, once we switched over to iRacing, it's a completely different animal. Um, you know, the first year was struggles, not even completing half of the races without getting wrecked out or something like that. And finally, I believe it was the end of the B car series. Two years ago, I ended up winning Homestead, uh, which I believe was my first win on iRacing in a league event. And then uh, last year, I, I believe I got three or four wins. And then, uh, like I said, the way this season started out and up till five weeks ago, I didn't think it was possible. But it feels great to to finally be back or feel like I'm back, at least in the B cars. And hopefully I'll be able to give them hell and run for a championship next season in the A cars. I have no doubt that you will, man. But, uh, you know, me personally, I appreciate your uh, sense of humor. We had some fun with you earlier in the season. You just kind of rolled with the punches and uh, and punched back. I know uh, myself, the producer, Thomas, uh, Canada, they appreciate it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And uh, I'm glad you you, uh, you gave me some validity, man. I, I picked you. You followed through. But I appreciate it, man. And uh, as a champion, give us those shout-outs, brother. Uh, once again, I want to thank Corey Lindsay. Um, without him, none of this would be possible. Without him, um, I doubt I'd even be on iRacing. Uh, Nathan Young for sponsoring the series, um, the paint schemes that he does for some of the drivers, just all of his involvement. Um, I know it's not the Cold Heart Art Cup Series, but I want to give him a shout out too. Um, he's definitely helped 
keep the league going. Uh, you guys showing up every Sunday and Monday to broadcast these things for us. Uh, would like to thank my sponsors, Skidoo, B&M Fabrications, Makita, Pro Mechanical Services, uh, STP. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be bringing most of those guys back for next season. All right, Paul. Well, I appreciate it, man. Congratulations again on your uh, well-deserved championship. And uh, make sure you holler at Johnny Thomas. See if you can get one of those sweet-ass <laughs> hats. <laughs> I was I was trying earlier. We'll uh we'll have to see if I can at least buy one off of them. I think we're gonna have to run our own Twitter campaign. Try and get Paul a hat. <laughs> That's right. Hashtag give Paul a hat. <laughs> can we start a GoFundMe too? I mean, it can't be more right. than fifteen or twenty bucks. <laughs> there we go. All right, Paul. Well, congratulations again, man. Well fought, and uh, look forward to seeing you next season, man. Awesome. Thanks, guys, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk to you tomorrow night. Well, if he was right. half as good as he was tonight, we probably will be talking to Paul Ross. Right? But speaking of tomorrow night, guess what, boys? We get to do it again. Only this time, it's with the Cup Cars in the Cold Hard Art Cup Series here at Homestead at Miami Speedway. Looking forward to it, man. Long year. 64 races. Or actually, 63. Tomorrow will be 64. Close out the three-wide <laughs> season. It's going uh, I got a feeling we're going to see some fireworks tomorrow night. Yeah, and there's three, if you look on stats, three three of the best going at it with Cameron Rich, uh, Peter Short, and Sam Close. So Peter's got a little work to do. We know Cam's quick week in, week out, and Sam, he's been good on these tracks with big tire fall off. But uh, any, anybody's guess right now, I guess. We'll make our predictions tomorrow, and we'll try and remember them this time. But no, until then, the uh, I remember mine. You just gotta well, remember yours. Yeah, you know, whatever. George, George should inform me better. Um, right. the producers running the results on the screen now. You can see, well, where your favorite playoff driver finished and where the champion Paul Ross finished tonight with a solid P two run. Unless Canada has anything over there doing his uh, crossword puzzle, we can uh, we can tell Trey. Can. <laughs> we can tell Trey to uh, hit him with it. See ya!